வணக்கம் ஐ எம் சாந்தி ஃப்ரம் இந்தியா ஐ எம் கிளாட் டு ப்ரெசென்ட் அ கிளிம்ஸ் இன் டு அவர் கல்ச்சர் ஃபண்டமெண்டலி அவர் கல்ச்சர் டேட்ஸ் தௌசண்ட்ஸ் ஆஃப் இயர்ஸ் பேக் அவர் ஆன்சிஸ்டர்ஸ் வெர் நாட் ஜஸ்ட் அமாசிங் வெல்த் இன் டேர்ம்ஸ் ஆஃப் கோல்ட் அண்ட் ஜெம்ஸ் பட் ஆல்சோ வெர் சீக்கிங் ட்ரூ ஜெம்ஸ் ஆஃப் விஸ்டம் தே வெர் வாய்ஸ் டு இன்வெஸ்ட் இயர் டைம் அண்ட் எனர்ஜி இன் அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்டிங் த டீப்பர் டைமென்ஷன்ஸ் ஆஃப் லைஃப் ரிஷீஸ் ஆர் டெடிகேட்டட் வாய்ஸ் ஆன்சிஸ்டர்ஸ் progressed mathematics science astronomy medicine and spirituality for the well-being of all i am glad to have come from the heritage that imbibes divinity as the highest state of humanity the culture that says divinity is there in everyone and everything that is why we say vanakkam or namaste when we greet someone vanakkam in tamil or namaste in sanskritam means i bow down to the divine in me the vanakkam or namaste is usually told with palms joined together symbolizing union that is to say inclusively we are one it also means the divine and self are the same in you and me we have an inclusive culture where we love and care for all living beings there are certain customs in place followed from ages ago for this purpose we have the custom of offering food to birds before we eat there is a custom of making beautiful drawings in front of the house every day it is called kolam this is traditionally drawn using rice flour edible flour is used in the drawings to feed the little ants and other small insects it also signifies impermanence since the drawing would invariably be scattered away by the winds and insects eating it it would be cleaned and a different design would be drawn afresh in the morning this signifies the cycle of life there is another significance to this kolam it has geometric design patterns which develop our creativity the word kolam is from the language tamil an equivalent word is rangoli in sanskritam tamil and sanskritam born in india are the most ancient languages of the world and their influence can be quite clearly seen not just in the other indian languages but even in european and african languages india has an abundance of languages and dialects and we take pride in preserving our diversity the beauty in our culture is embracing diversity rather than just making things uniform This inclusiveness is shown in other forms too. Even anyone who is not a family member, whether known to us or not, or even a complete stranger, is greeted with a relation based on age and gender. It is common for an old street vendor to be addressed as party or tata, which means grandma or grandpa. When someone is the age of our parents, we address them as amma or mommy or mama which means mother or auntie or uncle when the person is slightly older than us we address them as anna or akka which means elder brother or elder sister when a person is younger we refer to them as tambi or papa younger brother or younger sister the words are used are in tamil but if you take any language in india they would still follow a similar inclusive approach though the sounds are different we are unified by the spirit we have gratitude in our hearts for all that is provided by nature we celebrate the rivers hills animals even trees though there are different stories and beliefs behind these celebrations the spirit of it is gratitude we understand we cannot exist without the experience and knowledge of the people born before us so we have the innate behavior of respecting and revering elders this helps us to bring in humility and modesty within us yoga the true treasure of india is a part of our culture deeply imbibed in our day to day life in our families we are told to sit in sukhasana while eating this is the best position for easy digestion we do a prostration after our daily prayers This is Sashtanga Namaskar, which strengthens our spine. We are told to sit down on the ground while studying, singing or playing instruments. 
We do not wear slippers or shoes while dancing or even when we just walk in our house. This is to show our respect to our Mother Earth and being in contact with her with our feet. In our culture, traditionally, both men and women wear potto, that is bindu in Sanskritam, bindi in Hindi. The different natural mixtures, chandanam, kunkumam, haridram, vibhuti, tiruman, shri chornam, used in the forehead are said to aid spiritual growth and strengthen concentration. Bindu means the point or dot around which the mandala is created, representing the universe at which creation begins and may become unity. Now why do we wear it in the forehead between the eyebrows? It is because this is the place of Agnya Chakra, the seat of concealed wisdom. It is at this point that the two sides Nadi, Ida and Pingala are said to terminate and merge with the central channel Sushumna signifying the end of duality, the characteristic of being dual. It is difficult to summarize one of history's longest continuous civilization cultures in a few minutes. I have provided but a brief glimpse into our culture and hope to have piqued your curiosity to study this further. Thanks for providing me an opportunity to showcase my heritage.